So soils are not uh, fully elastic materials, they're semi-elastic, which means that there's permanent deformation within the material uh, due to a load increment. Um, and they do not return to the conditions that they were before we put the load increment on. Um, what that means in terms of this um, consolidation test, if we have our log uh, sigma prime axis on the x-axis and uh, our void ratio on the y-axis, um, before we load a soil, it might have exist in a condition over here where we have a void ratio. And when we load it, the void ratio decreases uh, down the normal compression line. Now, if we uh, then take off that load increment, the soil, because it's not fully elastic, will not return uh, or will not rebound back up this normal compression line. There'll be some permanent deformation. Uh, what that would actually look like would be something like this, where um, we remove the load increment, so um, we we're in this position and we uh, remove the load increment, so we travel backwards on the uh, x-axis. Um, the soil would go through something like this where there's some rebound, so it's not um, fully plastic material, um, but it's not fully elastic, so there's a, some sort of permanent deformation. Oh. So this is our plastic deformation. Okay, if we then uh, added our load increment back onto that, um, what it would do um, would be something like this. So the load increment will increase um, back to the point at which it left the normal compression line, and then it would continue back down on that gradient. So this behavior um, in a consolidation test is what we call a hysteresis loop. So um, when we're thinking about consolidation, it's important to know whether um, something is um, uh, normally consolidated, which means that it's um, on the normal compression line, or it's over-consolidated, which means that it's previously uh, experienced stresses um, that are greater than what it's currently experiencing. Um, and that's why the stress history is important for a soil. So a, a soil that exists on the normal compression line is called normally consolidated. Um, and a soil that exists within the hysteresis loop is called over-consolidated. Now this is important because you can see that if we have a soil that's on the normal co um, compression line, it's normally consolidated, and we apply stress to it, the change in void ratio and the settlement, therefore, will be greater than if it was on the hysteresis loop. So now, soils are over-consolidated through a number of different reasons. Um, they can be stressed um, through their own weight, and then that stress can be removed, so either through uh, erosion. You can imagine that... Um, that a, 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 a large volume of ice from a glacier or an ice sheet will consolidate a soil. And if that melted or was, was removed, then the soil would um, experience this hysteresis loop. We can also um, intentionally over-consolidate soils um, through surcharging or stress the soil, put, put material onto the, onto the surface of the soil and, and, and put stress into the material. Um, and then when we remove that surcharge, it would go through this hysteresis loop, um, which means that uh, it, when we construct on the soil, um, the consolidation will, will notionally be less than if it was just on the, uh, the, the normal compression line. So we can um, express this as a, um, uh, mathematically as an over-consolidation ratio, or the OCR. And that's equal to the uh, previous maximum stress, effective stress, divided by the, the current stress, effective stress. So for soils on the normally uh, uh, normal compression line, the previous maximum stress is the same as their current stress, so they haven't had a, a 
anything greater than what they're currently experiencing. So um, for normally consolidated soils, uh, the over-consolidation ratio is equal to 1. For soils that are uh, over-consolidated, you can see that the previous um, maximum stress is greater than their current stress. So for over-consolidated soils, you have an OCR that's greater than 1. So uh, we know how to calculate the current stress um, in a soil, and I've shown you how to do that in one of the previous videos. But how do we determine the maximum previous stress? Well, we can do that from a, a one-dimensional odometer test um, by analyzing the results um, during loading. Um, and I'll show you how to do that now. I'll just create some space here. So to calculate the maximum previous stress um, that our uh, over-consolidated soil has experienced, we take the results of the odometer test where we have a log effective stress on the x-axis and the void ratio on the y-axis. Um, and our over-consolidated uh, soil sample will exhibit a, a, a change in void ratio that looks something like this, where it has an initial void ratio. Um, and then it decreases. And then, th so this is all, this is the second part of the hysteresis loop. So um, it r essentially rejoins the normal compression line somewhere around here. So if we take the gradient of this uh, this normal compression line and um, take it backwards. it might look something like this. So this is our normal compression line. Okay, the next step is to identify the point of maximum curvature on this, uh, on this line. So it's somewhere around here. You can do that more accurately um, using a computer and looking at, uh, um, for the changes in gradient. Okay, so we have ad identified the point of maximum curvature. The next step is to draw a horizontal line from that point of maximum curvature. And then if we take the tangent at the point of maximum curvature, so this is the tangent of the curve, The um, previous maximum stress is the intersection or the bisection between um, these two lines, the horizontal line and the, the tangent. So if we, if we bisect uh, these two points um, in the middle, so if we draw a line that cuts this little triangle in half, and it looks something like this. So we've, we've cut this triangle in half, we've sort of half this distance here. This is the point of the, the maximum previous stress. So if we, we take the, the value down and read it from the x-axis, this here is the max previous effective stress. 